Good morning. I am Jerry Moshno, Chairman of the Greater Scranton Chamber of Commerce. On behalf of the Board of Directors and the Government Affairs and Advocacy Committee, I welcome you. The Chamber is devoted to attracting, sustaining, and growing a thriving business environment in Northeastern Pennsylvania. Through proactive engagement with local, regional, state, and federal offices, the Chamber offers support and advocacy on behalf of its members. Today's legislative forum is one of two opportunities for our members to hear from the Lackawanna County Commissioner candidates. These forums address topics specific to our members and the business community. Today, Democrat candidates Bill Gauhan and Matt McGloin will have an opportunity to address the audience with a brief opening statement followed by moderated questions from Bob Durkin, President and CEO of the Greater Scranton Chamber of Commerce. Moderated questions are based upon topics identified by our membership in a recent survey. Audience members will have the opportunity to address the candidates directly. The needs of the business community are at the forefront of our efforts. We kindly request all audience questions relate to business issues, helping to ensure a positive climate for business growth and development. Before we begin candidate introductions, I would like to thank ECTV for partnering with us. This forum and the upcoming October 5th forum are being filmed and will air on ECTV after October 5th. In addition, the program is being recorded and will be posted to the Chamber website. To ensure the best production quality, we ask that you silence your phones and minimize background noise. On your tables, you will see index cards. We ask the audience members to write your question on the card along with your name and contact information. Staff will collect the questions and Bob Durkin will read the question aloud to the candidates. Unread questions will be provided to the candidates for direct follow-up after the event. It is now my pleasure to begin the candidate introductions. We'll start with Bill Gahan. Bill was born and raised in the Manuka section of Scranton, Pennsylvania. He currently resides in South Scranton with his wife, Kelly, and five children, Jack, Murphy, Maeve, Mary, and Delia. Bill attended the University of Scranton and earned a Bachelor of Arts degree in communications with a minor in history in 2009. He earned a Master of Arts degree in secondary education history from the University of Scranton in 2012. He received his Pennsylvania Teaching Certificate in Social Studies and English in 2012, and most recently earned his Administrative Principal Certificate from the University of Scranton in 2020. Bill has taught American government for the past eight years at the Commonwealth Charter Academy. Bill has several years of experience in public service. First, he worked as an equal opportunity specialist in the city of Scranton's Office of Economic and Community Development from 2011 to 2013. He was elected to Scranton City Council in 2014 and served for eight years. He served as public works chairperson from 2014 to 2020 and was selected by his colleagues to be the president of city council from 2020 to 2022. Now on to Matt McGloin. Matt was born and raised in West Scranton, Pennsylvania, hey, right? So hey, was I. <laughs> he currently resides in Waverly with his wife, Bailey, and two children, Marshall and Beckett, and a Labrador retriever named Rudy. Now, I had a hard time with that one. Isn't that a Notre Dame thing? <laughs> I thought maybe you lost a bet to Bill and you had to name your dog we Rudy. We love underdogs. We love okay. underdogs. There you go. Matt attended Penn State University and earned a Bachelor of Arts degree in journalism from the College of Communications in 2012. He also played quarterback and captained the Nittly Lions during one of the most difficult periods in school history. From 2013 to 2018, Matt was a professional football player in the NFL with the Oakland Raiders, Philadelphia Eagles, 
Houston Texans, and the Kansas City Chiefs. He was also a member of the New York Guardians of the XFL from 2019 to 2020. Since 2020, Matt has been a television and radio co-host and analyst, appearing on the Big Ten Network as a color commentator and sideline reporter, as well as the Sirius XM Radio College Football co-host. In addition, Matt works as a real estate agent with the Lewis and Freeman Real Estate. Although Matt has never run for or held an elective, an elective office, he has civic experience. In 2016, Matt founded the Matt McGloin Foundation, which has helped youth, veterans, and other community and social causes throughout the region. Now for the long-awaited opening statements, we will start with Bill Gohan for your opening statement. Thank you. Uh, I want to thank Bob and Jerry and the entire Chamber of Commerce. Bob and Jerry assured me that this would not be as difficult as a city council meeting in Scranton, so uh, <laughs> I think we'll be okay. But we're really, I'm really happy to be here, and I know Matt's happy to be here this morning. You know, this journey for the both of us started uh, about a year ago when we both decided to run for county commissioner. And obviously in the primary, we were running separately. Everyone ran independent. But the reason that I ran, and I think the reason that uh, Matt ran, is because we want to help people uh, in our community. And I found 10 years ago when I decided to run for city council that you can make a difference in government. That's one of the great lessons that I learned over the period of the last uh, 10 years, is that if you work really hard and you listen to people, you can help them. And that is what has motivated me to run for Lackawanna County Commissioner. You know, Matt and I often talk over the last couple of weeks about how unique the position is of county commissioner. You really have an opportunity to affect people's lives from the cradle to the grave, whether it's from the Office of Youth and Family Services to the Area Agency on Aging. And for selfish reasons, for Matt and I, we think of our children. Uh, as Jerry said, I have five children under the age of eight, and Matt has two beautiful children. So we want opportunities for them when they get older. And it's exciting for us to be here this morning because we know, and we're humble enough to know, that we are going to need your help uh, if we win. We're going to need the Chamber of Commerce. We're going to need the business community because we can't do anything without strong economic development. We can't accomplish any of the goals that we want to accomplish or the vision that we have for Lackawanna County if everyone in this room and everyone in the business community in Lackawanna County isn't working hand in hand with us. So that's what we're committing to you today is that we are going to be, if we win, if we're successful in November, a strong partner with the business community and the Chamber of Commerce. So we're excited to be here today. I'm excited to answer questions and uh, thank you for the opportunity. Okay, we'll turn over to Matt. Can yeah, you um, you know, thank you, Bob. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, for, thank you to everybody who was who here today and, and thank you for the opportunity. Um, um, to be here today, you know, it's an honor and a privilege to be able to call Bill Gawhan my running mate as, as as we make this push towards November seventh, which which is rapidly um, um, approaching. And you know, to 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 have gotten to know this guy over the past year or so, I mean, this is a person sitting next to me who is a leader, who is a great father, um, who is a great husband, and somebody who has a lot of, of, of experience and somebody who helped lead the city of Scranton from distressed status um, as a member of council. So, um, you know, Bill and I were, were, were having a tremendous time right now here with our, with our campaign um, and couldn't be happier and more proud that, that I have the opportunity to run with, with somebody like Bill. You know, the question that I certainly get asked a lot is, is why, why am I running? Well, you know, I think back to growing up and having two very fortunate and blessed to have two incredible parents who instilled in me at an early age to never forget where I'm from. And I never have and and I never will. You know, I learned the importance of our home at an early age. Blue collar mentality, right? Bring your lunch pail, go to work every single day type attitude, chip on your shoulder. Um, mentality. There is an extremely strong work ethic here in our area. And, and just like Bill said, um, I want to be able to see our home grow. I want to be able to see our home expand. Bill Gaughan and I believe that in Lackawanna County, there is limitless potential and endless possibilities. Taxpayers deserve principal leaders who go to work every single day to make people's lives better. 
they deserve a government that has their family's best interests in mind. Um, improving the lives of county workers, students, seniors is what inspired us to get into this race, and that's and that's what we plan to do as, as your next commissioner. So restoring faith, I believe, in Lackawanna County government won't happen overnight, but with your support together, I believe that we can make Lackawanna County the very best place to live and to raise our families. Thanks, Matt. Now we'll turn it over to Bob for the moderated questions for the candidates. Thanks. Um, I was thinking when Matt said uh, your parents told you to never forget where you're from. I guess if you drive by Catalano's on a regular basis, you'll you'll you'll, you'll know. You know, Bob. I actually <laughs> you know, now you got now. So there's, there's a mural of him on the side of the building. Our four year. Our, I, I'm driving down Main Ave one day, and our four year old. I, I actually said it to him like, "Do you know that's supposed to be me?" There he goes, "No, no, <laughs> okay, can't impress him, can't impress him." All right. Well, as uh, as uh, Jerry mentioned before, um, we have gleaned questions uh, from our uh, Government Affairs Committee and from other members through the survey, Government Affairs survey we put out recently. Uh, in advance of this meeting, we have provided the candidates with the topics on which we're going to ask these questions, but not the specific questions. So let me start with what is clearly at the top of most of our minds these days, and that's uh, workforce development. So workforce issues have emerged as perhaps the biggest challenge to the economy, not just in Lackawanna County, but across the region, state, and country. Uh, the uh, Lackawanna County Workforce Development Board comes under the charge of the county commissioner. So I want to ask this question. In what ways do you see us using the County Workforce Development Board and other partnerships to create a robust talent pipeline that meets the evolving needs of the business community? Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> I had the opportunity over the last few weeks when uh, Matt and I knew we were going to come in here uh, before all of you to take a look at the uh, five-year plan that the Workforce Development Board had has developed over the last several years. And I think in terms of what the commissioners can do is really to extend what's already been done. I think the Chamber of Commerce and the Workforce Development Board and the county commissioners have really done a tremendous job coming out of the COVID-19 pandemic to identify all of those areas in which in which you need workers. Um, as everyone here knows, and it's no secret, uh, small businesses and uh, large businesses throughout the county suffered greatly during the pandemic. And coming out of that, I think the Workforce Development Board and the county commissioners did a good job in identifying where we need trained people, where we need people in this county, young people, whether it's in high school or in college, to, to be trained and to be successful and ready to take on these jobs. So what I foresee the county commissioners doing is to continue to investing in these training programs that the Workforce Development Board has already invested in. Um, where I work at the Commonwealth Charter Academy, we have put a huge emphasis on career pathways. And I know that that's being done in, in school districts all over the state of Pennsylvania. So to get these children when they're in uh, middle school and high school and to identify uh, what they want to do and to let them know what jobs are out there and what jobs are available. So as county commissioners, I think what Matt and I are going to be focusing on is to continue the strong relationship between the county, the Workforce Development Board, and the Chamber of Commerce. Yeah, no, Bob, as you mentioned, you know, I, I think it's crucial that as a county, we continue to do a great job and even a better job of establishing that talent ecosystem or that talent that talent pipeline, right? Our, our younger generation needs to have the skills necessary for the jobs of the future, whether that's better vocational, better trade, better technology programs um, for them. Uh, you know, we believe that we must increase our commitment to public education, whether that's having countywide initiatives during, during the school year or summer programs um, for children. We must work with local employers. We must work with school districts. You know, Lackawanna County holds a number of colleges here and in the surrounding area. In fact, it's the fourth largest by quantity in the state of Pennsylvania behind Montgomery, behind Delaware, and behind Allegheny County. So, you know, being able to sit down with, with the presidents of these universities and talk about structuring and building programs for these students to talk about the benefits of being of being here and staying here and living here and working here proximity or low proximity um, to major cities the low cost of housing um, the low cost of living discuss bringing businesses to the area that would benefit the homegrown students the kids that want to stay here and then bringing businesses to the area that would benefit the kids that have come here from outside the areas talking about um, remote work you know Jerry mentioned when we started, being able to attract, sustain, 
and grow businesses here so that next generation can stay here, live here, work here, raise their families here. I have two young children. Bill has five young children who we hope when they join the workforce in many years from now can remain home and, and want to remain home. You know, far too often, and I've had the conversations with people. In fact, when you're out knocking on doors and somebody opens the door and it's, it's, an, it's an older couple and they say, my son lives in Philadelphia now. My son lives in New York. My son lives in Virginia. You know, we have to do a better job of keeping our younger generation home and giving them the opportunity to live and work where they're from. And I think by taking this approach and preparing them for that next chapter, when we talk to businesses wanting to relocate or businesses wanting to come to the area, we say we have people who are not just ready to work, but are more than qualified to do so. I just want to add one more sure. thing to that now that I'm sitting here thinking about it. The other thing that <clears throat> when I we read the report, the, the thing I think that the county has done well and the Workforce Development Board and Chamber has done well is to follow the data. Being in education, the number one thing that I have always been taught is don't make a decision without looking at the data. So we want to make sure as county commissioners that our workforce is resilient and we're changing as the economy changes. And our workforce is ready to change on a moment's notice. We saw what happened, as I mentioned before, during the pandemic. We were kind of caught flat-footed. Um, I'll never forget the first council meeting. I, I just became president, and we all of a sudden had to figure out a way to do it remotely. And we did, and we changed, and we adapted. And that's what we need to do here with our local economy, to be prepared for that. And Bob talked uh, or said in his question about collaboration. We want to make sure that we're not just holed up in the county building. We want to be out constantly talking to small businesses, talking to uh, everyone throughout this community so that we can understand what's going on. Thank you. All right, well, still on the topic of workforce, um, our community is becoming increasingly diverse, presenting both opportunities and challenges for business in terms of workforce development. What are your thoughts or ideas on how to assimilate such constituencies, including immigrant and refugee communities, into our county workforce? The, the number one issue I see right now is in terms of, and it's something maybe we would never think of, is the internet. I, uh, from what I see with uh, our immigrant population and those who are uh, in low income population in the different uh, housing projects is that they, their number one barrier besides transportation is the internet, is having Wi-Fi. It's something that I never really thought of before. I actually read it in, in the report from the Workforce Development Board, but that is so important. It is such a barrier. Uh, if you don't know the English language and you can't afford the internet, how are you gonna go out and get a job? How are you gonna be able to, if you do get a job and you have to work from home, how can you work from home without the internet? So I know that the county has worked really hard on their broadband initiative. Matt and I wanna continue that. Um, I know that there's an effort underway. I'm not sure where it is right now in terms of making sure that all of the uh, housing authorities in our region give the, the different uh, developments, the housing developments, internet and Wi-Fi. So I think that's a great way to help those communities and help our workforce. And the other thing goes back to career pathways, um, making sure that the Workforce Development Board uh, the local colleges and universities are working with our local high schools and school districts. Um, one of the really, really interesting things I think the county did in the last uh, two years is to create a literacy committee, uh, which Matt and I really want to make a part of the Department of Health and put a huge focus on that. Because workforce development is going to be very difficult if our, the people in our community, whether they're from a low-income housing or they're from our immigrant population, if they can't read and they can't write. And we have a huge problem. In fact, I would say it's an emergency, not only here in Lackawanna County, but across the state of Pennsylvania and the country, in the fact that our literacy rates are so low. Um, so I think the county commissioners can play a huge role in that. One of the ideas that I've heard come from the literacy committee is to put many uh, pop-up libraries in our, in our housing projects uh, across the county. I think that's a great idea. We have to meet these people where they are. Um, and Matt and I are committed to doing that. 
No, well said, and this is obviously a conversation Bill and I have had a number of times now, but I, feel, uh, I think two points I take away from what Bill said, and I completely agree with and exactly where I was going to go with, is increasing our commitment to internet connectivity and, and, and broadband access. Things are changing. Technology is changing. Um, we need to be able to provide students, families, businesses with these types of advancements so everybody is afforded um, the same opportunities countywide. And, you know, we had the opportunity to speak a few weeks back about, about the, the literacy committee and what our thoughts on and what are we believe in and that's going to be crucial moving forward for us here as a county. I just want to add one more thing. When I worked for the city of Scranton in the Office of Economic and Community Development, I had an opportunity to work in the uh, First Time Home Buyers Program and we work really closely with the uh, Nepali community. We have so many great immigrant communities in the city of Scranton and in Lackawanna County, and they, they want to be a part of our, they are a part of our community. So as county commissioners and as uh, mayors and council people and elected officials across the, the county, we need to make sure that we have open lines of communication with these different groups of people because they are so important to everything that we do, our local economy, workforce development, um, and they are going to play over the period of the next 20 to 30 years with the way the demographics are changing. They're going to play a huge role in the future of our county. So shifting now to budget and fiscal responsibility. Uh, fiscal responsibility and the efficient use of budgetary resources are paramount to any public office. How do you plan to manage the budget for Lackawanna County to ensure it is allocated effectively, transparently, and in a manner that maximizes the benefits for business and the community at large? Um, yeah, Bob, I'll be brief here with my statement. We, we, you know, again, another discussion that, that Bill and I have had, we have to have some type of long-term financial plan um, in place. Right? We talk, we've talked about that. The state, uh, we think the state is, um, you know, can help us with that tremendously. I, I always go back to thinking that, you know, we should have some type of state of the county yearly a press conference, something along those lines. People in Lackawanna County deserve to know what's going on year in and year out. They deserve to know where we stand, exactly where we stand, where do we plan on going, and how do we get there? Can you repeat that question again? <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. um, fiscal responsibility and efficient use of budgetary resources are paramount to any public office. How do you plan to manage the budget for Lackawanna County to ensure that it's allocated effectively transparently and in a manner that maximizes the benefits for both business and the community at large. Sure. So right now in uh, our review of the budget and the fiscal health of the county, I see a, a lot of similarities between Lackawanna County and the city of Scranton. Um, when I first became a councilman in 2014, I was only 26 years old and uh, my first meeting with the Pennsylvania Economy League, they told us that we might not be able to make payroll uh, by the end of the year. Every single meeting, everybody was holding their breath. Now, I don't think that the county is in dire financial condition as the city, but there are issues. Uh, last year, the county had a $8 million deficit. They were able to close that deficit with one-time revenue sources, but those are gone. Uh, the CFO now of the county is Dave Bolzoni. I'm sure many of you know Dave in this room, and I, Dave and I have a great relationship together. Uh, and he issued a memo which outlined all of the different issues with the county's finances. And one of them was that they're relying way too much on one-time revenue sources. So as Matt said, I think one of the things that the county has to do that they don't do now, that we did in the city of Scranton, was to partner with the state of Pennsylvania and come up with a strategic financial plan. We don't have one now in the county. We need to know financial projections, not just for next budget year, but for the next five years and the next 10 years. So we need to get on sound financial footing. Now the county has a fund balance somewhere in the area of 20 to $25 million. The problem is we cannot continue to chip away at that because the fund balance has to be a certain percentage of the overall budget. Um, so if Matt and I were to come into office and we were to take money from the fund balance, which previous commissioners have done, uh, we would be negatively affecting the bond rating of the county. Um, and in fact, the bond rating of the county was just lowered. So that means interest rates will be higher. It would cost more money, uh, it would cost more to borrow money. 
So the bottom line here is that we need to follow the same principles that we followed in the city of Scranton back in 2014. And it took a couple of years, but we did we were able to get on sound financial footing. So we need to do the same thing here uh, in Lackawanna County. The other thing we need to do too, I think, is be transparent. You know, that's one of the, the things that we did and I made sure to do when I was on council is to be honest with the public. This idea today that uh, elected officials can come out and say, I will never raise your taxes. Well, that's just not true. Matt and I are gonna do everything we can to make sure that taxes are not raised, but it's not realistic to sit up here and say that that's never going to happen. We're gonna do everything in our power to make sure that that doesn't happen. Uh, but we wanna be honest with people and we wanna present a budget that's realistic and that follows those same uh, financial management principles that I'm used to uh, with the city of Scranton and with our former business administrator, uh, Mr. Bozzoni. So the, uh, the Greater Scranton Chamber of Commerce was, has long been on, was long on record in support of uh, countywide reassessment. That's now underway. Uh, what do you expect to be the impact of the uh, countywide reassessment on, uh, on business and the citizens of Lackawanna County? Uh, so I actually think it's going to be favorable uh, to the county. Uh, when I was on city council, we our, our problem and one of the problems that the county has is that revenues continue to stay stagnant, expenditures continue to grow. And one of the reasons that is is because we haven't conducted a reassessment since I think the 1950s or 1960s. So I think it will have a positive effect. In saying that, we understand because we're out all the time and we're knocking on doors and talking to people over the last year and a half that there are people who are deathly afraid of reassessment uh, for a number of different reasons. So I think we need to continue to educate people on reassessment to let them know that it's not this uh, scary thing that's going to uh, happen. Uh, and if it does impact you, uh, we're going to make sure that no one loses their homes. We're going to put programs in place. In fact, the county, I think, is already in the process of putting uh, a program in place to help people who may uh, lose their homes or have a hard time if their taxes do go up. But the bottom line here is, is that reassessment will be a good thing for the county. It's actually going to help uh, our budget. It's going to help the city of Scranton. It's going to help the county overall. Um, and we're going to have to make sure that people are educated on it. And we're going to have to make sure that we do a very good job in the appeals process when uh, this entire uh, thing comes to a head in, I think, 2026. So we're committed to that. Um, but this idea that, and I think some people think that if we get into office, we can stop reassessment, that is not realistic at all. That's not going to happen. Um, I've had several people approach me and say, you know, if Matt and you get in, you have to put a stop to reassessment. And our answer to that is, that is not, it's not possible and it's not feasible. Even if we were to do that, the county has already spent a few million dollars on reassessment. So we would essentially be throwing that away. And the second thing is, if we did that, the courts would come and make us conduct a reassessment. So we have to do the right thing. The right thing has already been done and we just have to see it through and make sure that it's done uh, in a transparent manner. So I think the most important thing for Bill and myself moving forward when it does come when it comes to reassessment and, it, and Bill is right over the past year or so it's probably a conversation I've had more than 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 any other topic or anything that we're we're here just discussing today. People are scared. People are afraid. And it's it, it, it's predominantly the, our older generation here um, in Lackawanna County. And 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 Bill is right. You know, we, we can't make up for the actions of a previous administration. All we can do is make the best with with what we have. And um, I think the most important thing for us moving forward is to ensure that the reassessment process is fair. It's transparent. And we'll do everything we can to make sure that we have a fully staffed office capable of managing his or her um, requests if, if you feel your tax assessments are, are out of line. And Bill briefly had mentioned this before, and he's right. I think the county is looking at something right uh, like this right now, but it's taking a look at some type of programs for our seniors or people that may may qualify for for something if if they are in fear of, of, of losing their home. So there's a lot to look at, but I think right now the most important thing is to continue to educate, to continue to learn more about it, and continue to prepare for, for what when that does come into effect. And one, I'll add one thing. When I was on council, uh, I remember, I can't remember the person's name or the business, but we had a business come into the uh, our Office of Economic and Community Development. And 
you know, they were poking around about opening a business here. And one of their questions was, when's the last time you had a reassessment? And when we told them, their eyes got really big and they said, okay, we never saw them again. I mean, I really think that that is one of the barriers here in terms of, and I don't know how big of a barrier it is, but bringing new businesses in that we, we it, it looks bad for us as an, as a region that we haven't, we're only one of, I think, three counties across the state of Pennsylvania that haven't done this. So when it is done, the other thing, the other uh, issue that Matt and I are going to have to address is when are we going to do the next one? So we're already, you know, planning that and thinking about it. And how do we tackle that? Because we can't let it go for another 50 years. We have to stay on top of it and uh, be proactive. Uh, the next topic is infrastructure and development. Uh, infrastructure plays a critical role in supporting business attraction, sustainment, and growth, the mission of the Chamber. Uh, given that the county controls substantial road and bridge assets, how do you envision, envision leveraging county and potential federal infrastructure development resources to enhance the overall business environment in Lackawanna County? Well, the benefit that we have uh, as if we are elected as Democratic County Commissioners is right now we have a president who, uh, in Joe Biden, who's put in a tremendous amount of money into uh, infrastructure uh, with the recent act that was passed. We have a Democratic uh, Senator in Bob Casey who has made a commitment uh, to infrastructure throughout communities in Pennsylvania. Matt Cartwright, Marty Flynn, our uh, delegation in the State House. So we're going to use those relationships to make sure that we bring as much money as we can home to Lackawanna County. In the county, we have almost 25 miles of roads. We have dozens and dozens and dozens of bridges. So we have to make sure that the infrastructure here is strong. We have to make sure that we fix those bridges, which I know the current county commissioners have, have done a really good job on making sure that that's getting done. One of the things looking forward uh, is the train that from all intensive purposes will be here on the next several years. And we've talked to Congressman Cartwright about this. Well, what does that mean for the area? It means that our infrastructure needs to be sound. We're gonna have, uh, hopefully, a, an immense amount of people traveling to Lackawanna County. Uh, tourism is going to increase. Uh, transportation, obviously, is going to increase. Uh, we have an immense need for affordable housing, and that's only gonna be compounded uh, when we have transportation from uh, Scranton to New York City. So Matt and I are committed to making sure that our infrastructure is strong in Lackawanna County. And as part of that, and we touched on it earlier, that also comes along with broadband and technology and making sure that we are, even though we're the youngest county in the state of Pennsylvania, that we're number one in technology and broadband and Wi-Fi and the internet. And we're making sure that, as I tried to do when I was on council, uh, making Scranton a smart city, making Lackawanna County one of those counties that uh, others look at throughout the state and say, wow, that's pretty cool what they're doing up there. They're really um, on the cutting edge in terms of technology, in terms of, and Matt and I have talked about this over the last few weeks, artificial intelligence, things like that. So all of these things are exciting um, and they cost money. And that's why I think uh, having a, a president who's a Democrat and all of the other uh, people that I mentioned, we just need to make sure that we keep those relationships strong and we have a plan in place, which we will. Yeah, Thank Bill, you. Yeah. Bill, Bill briefly mentioned this and it's something we, we did touch on earlier, but you think infrastructure development, you think roads, bridges, tunnels, waters, railroads, but you know, increasing commitment to internet, tech, internet um, connectivity and broadband access, you know, will be huge for us moving forward. Bill had mentioned President Biden, Senator Casey, Matt Cartwright, Marty Flynn. You know, we want to be able to collaborate regionally as well. I think of Interstate 81. I mean, that's that's the main artery here, right? It's critical to the success of our area. It's outdated. It should be three lanes. Um, you know, it has to be done, right? Not five years from now, not 10 years from now, not 15 years from now. It has to be done now. You know, I think we need to be living in this century here right now not another one. Thank you for uh, stepping on my questions uh, that are coming <laughs> up. I appreciate that. You know, I'm thank you for the depth of your answers. Um, employee transportation can be a significant factor affecting workforce participation, especially for small businesses and individuals on the lower end of the socioeconomic ladder. What strategy, strategies might you consider to enhance access to public transit options for employees? Say that again. 
Sorry. <laughs> I don't want to hog the yeah. mic. So I was yeah. Gonna what strategies might you have to, uh, to consider to enhance access to public transit options for employees? Well, I think uh, right now we need to rethink uh, public transportation. Um, I don't, I, you know, you look at the numbers from the amount of people who use uh, Colts buses and it's really not, uh, it's not a great amount of people. We have a lot of senior citizens and people from uh, uh, low-income housing that use public transportation. I think we need to work, I think actually we need to look at what other communities do across Pennsylvania and across the country. There's some really interesting things going on now with public transportation uh, across the United States. So, you know, Matt and I have often talked about not recreating the wheel. One of the things that we want to do if we're elected as county commissioner is to work closely with the County Commissioners Association uh, in the state of Pennsylvania, and also to look at what other counties are doing across the United States of America. Um, when I was on city council, that's one of the things that we did. We looked at what are other city councils doing across Pennsylvania. And one of the things that came out of that was doing some really unique things in terms of technology, um, in terms of how we ran our meetings. And so we're, we need to do the same things with transportation. Um, you know, as a, again, I, I think sometimes when you're in elected office, and this is, I don't want to see this happen if we uh, become county commissioners, you tend to get holed up in the office and you deal with putting out the fires as they come up. We want to be proactive. And we want to look at what other successful counties and communities are doing. And we want to emulate that. And we, of course, we want to make it our own. But we want to look at what they're doing and, and what's working in terms of transportation. Um, yeah, I think it's networking as well, seeing what you know, some of the major counties have, have been able to do. Allegheny, Montgomery, what are they using transportation-wise? How are they helping their, their seniors get to, you know, where they need to go, whether it's work, the grocery store, whatever it may be, you know, how, how are their students, um, you know, getting access to go to where they need to go as well. But, um, you know, obviously there's, there's a lot more to learn uh, about that. And, you know, uh, but it, it's kind of one of the topics Bill and I have discussed um, you know, in the past, obviously you mentioned Colts is, is a great asset that, that we have here in Lackawanna County. How do we look to improve that? How do we get that up to date? Um, but, you know, transportation is a concern and, and transportation will certainly be a priority for Bill and myself. Uh, the next topic is small business support. Uh, entrepreneurship is a vital engine of economic growth and innovation. As a commissioner, what can you do to foster an environment that encourages and supports budding entrepreneurs to grow the entrepreneurial ecosystem locally and regionally? Well, I think we can expand upon what's already being done. You know, Matt and I had an opportunity to take a tour of the Scranton Enterprise Center, and I, my mind was blown when I walked out of there. Um, I, you know, kind of knew what was going on just from being on city council and uh, listening to the different stories over the past 10 years. But what has happened over the last decade here is unbelievable in terms of the collaboration between the Chamber of Commerce, Lackawanna County, the city of Scranton, and all of the different boroughs and, and townships uh, throughout our region. So I think, you know, in terms of how do we attract entrepreneurs, we need to keep it investing in the chamber, keep investing in uh, things like the Ignite program, uh, the Tech Accelerator program. We need to expand on those things. Uh, when Matt and I were getting a tour and we were able to see how these small businesses, these, these tech startups, um, started with maybe one or two employees and now they have 20 or 30 employees. Well, why was that? It was because of the help that they're receiving from the chamber, the uh, financial commitment from the county. So we want to expand that. Um, over the last several months, Pennsylvania has added, I think, someplace in the area of over 10,000 tech jobs. Lackawanna County is becoming a hotbed for these tech startups. We want to continue to invest in that um, and make a bigger investment in that. Um, I think the county now provides somewhere in the area of ten to twenty thousand uh, dollars of a financial commitment. You know, we want to improve that and expand it um, because we know with young children and being young ourselves so far, um, that technology is the key to everything here. Yeah. Um, so we think that, you know, that the anchors of our economy are health care and education. We think we eventually over the next 10 to 20 years can also have one of our anchors be technology. So we're going to put a special emphasis on that.
So I think, yeah, as Bill just kind of grouped, you know, the two together, their small business support with entrepreneurship support. I think I do think they go hand in hand. And when it comes to small business or local business support, um, I think this is one of the strengths that the county does have. One thing they're very good about, because being able to highlight our local businesses, I mean, it's vital to to their success. We need to be able to do that, you know. My parents, my, my father worked for the city of Scranton for over 25 years. My parents have been florists for 42 years. They started with a small shop by St. Pat's Church, moved down to Main Ave for, for a very long time. And, you know, now they do it out of the house um, a little bit. My father's 72 years old, my mother's 70. So they've, they've certainly slowed down a little bit, but they, they, they work harder than ever. Um, but I've seen the struggles that small businesses have faced, the ups and downs. Um, you know, we must be a resource. For local business owners, we must support local businesses. We must find ways to be able to expand um, our local business programs. I'm a big fan of the Ignite, Ignite program and what the chamber has done, the ability to educate, to guide, to network, um, and to advise entrepreneurs and their businesses um, is critical to helping them succeed. And obviously, you know, with that, you know, with the success of those, it creates jobs for the people in Lackawanna County as well. Bill had mentioned the opportunity that we had to tour the um, uh, the Scranton Enterprise Center and just to see some of the work that you guys have, have been able to do is incredible. We had a conversation with Dave, um, who's the uh, founder and CEO of, of Showcase, which is, which is an app that allows you to listen to, um, you know, new music, different types of emerging music daily. I mean, it has incredible potential and just knowing that there's, there's startups and there's businesses like that in Lackawanna County um, is incredible. I, I think programs like this encourage entrepreneurs to take that next step, right? It's not just a dream anymore. I mean, the chamber is in a position where you're able to make people's dreams, you know, become a reality through a program like Ignite. Nice. Uh, the next topic is regional and municipal collaborations. The city of Scranton is the largest city in northeastern Pennsylvania and, of course, the county seat of Lackawanna County. Uh, if the city of Scranton is doing well, it's likely that it indicates that Lackawanna County is also thriving. How important do you believe it is to have a strong collaboration between Lackawanna County and the city of Scranton for the future of our community? So I mentioned regional collaborations a little bit earlier, Bob, and obviously, you know, Interstate 81 being a main concern and something to look at moving forward. But, but when I think of regional collaboration, and Bill had touched on this, I immediately think of having a train here in Northeast PA. I also believe it, it probably should have happened um, by now, but, but having the ability to connect our region will, will change it drastically. To have the chance to board a train behind the transit center in downtown Scranton and be to New York City and roughly three hours or so um, is a fantastic opportunity for Lackawanna County. And it's not just that, but it's, it's to have the ability to be productive and work while on that train as well and, and while traveling. Um, I think our airport needs to be a, a major focus moving forward. It's a real asset. I do understand that we're constantly trying to do things right and get airlines there, but it has to be a priority for us to get more direct flights um, I'm out of there. When, when you look at municipal government collaborations, we must respect work and communicate and be proactive in doing so with all of our elected officials at the federal, state, county, and local levels. Um, I, I mean, I believe we should be meeting quarterly with, with the elected officials from our boroughs and townships. We must look at countywide problems um, with, with some of you know, our municipalities and the things that they're dealing with and help find solutions for those. Um, you know, as a county commissioner, we believe that you are there to serve all of Lackawanna County, not just certain areas. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Matt. Um, collaboration. Without collaboration, I don't know how you're successful as a county commissioner, as a mayor, as a council person. When I was on city council, uh, we worked very closely with the Lackawanna County commissioners to create the land bank. Uh, and the land bank was a vehicle to get these properties which are uh, abandoned or vacant and overgrown uh, back on the tax rolls. And we work really closely with them. And sometimes I think it's as simple as um, just saying, hey, what, what can we do to work together? What do you need? You know, when I was on council, we everybody thought we were crazy, but we started a shared services committee with the Scranton School District. And 
there was a lot of negative negativity in the beginning surrounding it because everyone is so territorial uh, in our area over, well, that's what we do. We've been doing it this way for the last 50 years. So don't come near us. And we, and I said, okay, let's just get in a room and sit around a table and say, what do you do? What do we do? And how can we work together and make it easier uh, on both of us? And so what came out of the shared services committee with the school district was some really, really cool things and some simple things that we just hadn't thought of until we got in a room with the uh, school district officials and we just listened to them. So Collaboration to me means listening to other people. You know, as Bob stated in his question, as the city of Scranton goes, so goes the county. And that is true. And I saw that firsthand uh, when I was a councilman for eight years, whether it was with the financial difficulties that we had, we had to work with the county. We had no choice. So as county commissioners, that is a foregone conclusion. We're going to work with the county. We're going to work with the chamber because we can't be successful without collaborating with all these different stakeholders. And one of the most important things that we can do as county commissioners is to meet with all of you on a regular basis, to continue to listen to you and to make sure that the lines of communication are open. And as I mentioned before, to look at what other areas of the county are doing. What are those other progressive counties doing? What's Montgomery County and Allegheny County doing? What are other areas across the country doing in terms of collaboration? And one thing I found uh, when I was on council was the state looks at you more favorably when you work together and you collaborate with other parts of the community. You know, we did a citywide uh, park, comprehensive park uh, plan, and we worked with some of the outlying uh, boroughs and townships to say, hey, how can we pool resources uh, because we're having a problem with our workforce in the parks department? Is there any way that we can share resources? And it ended up being successful. Can we purchase things together? Things as simple as that. So we're committed to collaboration because I don't think there's any other way. You have to collaborate uh, both with the city of Scranton and the entire Lackawanna County. Thank you. So staying on the uh, subject of regionalism, uh, that's been a priority of the Chamber of Commerce. It's a highlight of our current strategic plan. So you've addressed the intra-county uh, collaboration. Uh, let me ask you, if you have any thoughts about working with other counties within our region, uh, Luzerne County, Monroe County, uh, Wayne County, the other surrounding counties, um, any thoughts on how you might address a, a broader collaborative environment? Absolutely. I think it goes back to uh, the County Commissioners Association, which Matt and I are going to be a big part of uh, if we're elected. You know, we, we're not going to miss those meetings. We're going to attend, attend all of them and listen to what uh, the other county commissioners are doing across the state of Pennsylvania. One of the ideas that has been floated uh, to Matt and I, and some of you in this room may have heard of it, is a new dental school uh, in downtown Scranton. And the reason for that is because of the lack of uh, dentists in our region, the lack of dentists in Monroe County, in Luzerne County, and here in Lackawanna County. So we need to stop thinking just about uh, us in terms of you know the the twenty or the uh, in the city of Scranton, the twenty six square miles are just in the county. We need to start thinking regionally. As I mentioned before. You do run into problems uh, because we are, as a region, kind of culturally uh, fractious. Everybody kind of wants their, uh, their piece of the pie and they don't want to um, give any of that up. But I think we can get through, we can break through those barriers uh, as long as we listen to people and we work with them. But working with other counties, seeing what they're doing, collaborating with them, that is going to be a number one priority uh, for Matt and I. Absolutely, to be crucial for us. And, you know, I, 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 I uh, I love what Bill says when he talks about seeing what other counties are doing as well, because other counties have, you know, you may be able to help bring businesses to the area just because it's not your county doesn't mean that it's not beneficial to your county, right? People from your county can still go and work in that area as well. So being able to be proactive and, and picking up the phone and, and, and calling um, you know, elected officials from these different parts of the counties and say, hey, what's worked for you, you know, over the past few years or so? How have you done it historically? Um, we want to be able to communicate more. We want to be able to talk and meet with you, you know, understanding that, you know, there's there's a bigger purpose here, right? And you have to take a look at the big picture, right? And look at all of, of Northeast PA. And I'll add one thing, one more thing to that. Um, one of the, and it was controversial and I really couldn't figure out why. When I was on council, we, we finally passed the Scranton-Abington's Planning Association. You know, 
that is a great example of working to get collaborating with other parts of the community. But it was met with a lot of resistance and it was just a regional planning tool and it would save the city of Scranton when I was on council somewhere in the area of almost $500,000 because we wouldn't have to come up with our own uh, zoning plan. We would work with those other communities and share the cost. So it's things like that. And I think the, mo the, the hardest part is breaking through uh, those difficulties of everybody wanting to keep you know, their territory uh, to themselves. But I think as long as you communicate with them, uh, I think we can, we can break through that. Thank you. Um, uh, when we promote uh, at uh, Lackawanna County in Northeastern Pennsylvania through the Scranton plan, one of the biggest strengths we have right now is promoting the quality of life in our community, sometimes underappreciated, I suppose, by our own. So in that realm, the quality of life is a community, in a community's fundamental measure of the overall well-being and vitality of that community. It encompasses various aspects, including parks, trails, cultural activities, tourism, and the like. How do you see the county supporting such quality of life initiatives? Well, Matt and I actually talk about this a lot because we've spent most of the last 10 years since we started having children in parks across the city of Scranton and Lackawanna County. So we've become uh, big park aficionados and are very critical if we don't like, you know, our kids don't like the way the slides are or the uh, jungle gym or whatever the case might be. But um, parks, trails, green spaces, they are so important in our community. I just think of even friends of mine uh, from out of the area, when they're looking to move here, uh, the, one of the first things they look at outside of how are the school districts is what kind of parks do you have? How are, you, how are your trails? Are they safe? How, many, how much green space do you have? Where can we, uh, recre where can we recreate? Where can we hang out? Uh, where can we bring our children? Um, I find myself every weekend with my wife saying, what park can we take them to? Because we have five under the age of eight, so we have to make sure that they can blow off some steam. Where can we take them? What's safe? What, what new playground do we have in Lackawanna County? Um, and anybody with children, is, that's constantly on their mind. So Matt and I are going to make a, a big commitment to our park system, our trails, and our green spaces in Lackawanna County. We also have talked over the last two months about programming for our young children in Lackawanna County. One of the things that his wife and my wife often talk about is, can we take them to a camp or something that is not that expensive? or is free, like the county used to offer. I think they still offer some camps uh, here and there. We want to expand upon that um, and offer programming for our children in the parks. Like when my parents were growing up, um, my mom used to go to Connell Park and Banger Heights, used to go to Rockwell Park, and there used to be people there to work with them, to uh, go through an art program. And those things shaped who they were as people. And they still talk about it 60 years later. Do you remember when we had, had a hat day at Rockwell Park? Matt and I think we can bring that back. There's no reason not to. Because it benefits our children, it benefits our families, and it benefits our communities. And the other thing we've talked about is finding a way to create a new park in Lackawanna County, um, a new green space in Lackawanna County to continue to improve our trails. Uh, I run on the trail almost every morning, and it is amazing to me how many families use our trails, uh, the Lackawanna Heritage Valley Trail, uh, every single day. So we just want to make sure they're safe, and we want to continue to expand them. Yeah, Bill's right. I mean, we have some of the most scenic and spectacular parks here in Lackawanna County. It's a beautiful place to live. Montage Mountain, the amphitheater, the cultural center. There's great golf courses. There's great food here in Lackawanna County. Our parks and rec department will be a priority um, for our administration here. We have to continue to be able to promote our parks. You know, we must ensure that our community assets remain safe and vibrant places um, for people of all ages to be able to gather, to exercise, to enjoy. Um, and as Bill had mentioned, we want to be able to create more so that people of Lackawanna County can continue to explore our, our wonderful area. You know, and again, you know, I should have spoke first, I think, on this one. But, you know, one of the things he is right that that businesses say, along with workforce development here, when, when they when they talk about coming here is how are your schools and and how's the quality of life? We want to be able to say that 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 we have the best in, in the state of Pennsylvania. Um, you know, also, I think our arts and culture department um, can play a huge role in this as well. Right. It's a large part of our county. We're seeing 
a lot more people want to live and want to be in the downtown area here. Um, new apartments, there's new businesses, there's new restaurants opening. Things are always changing. So, you know, being able to increase our quality of life here, um, beautiful murals, uh, cultural events, festivals, there's a lot more opportunities here for uh, outdoor recreational um, opportunities moving forward, right? That'll help increase our tourism and that'll make people want to say, there's always something going on in Lackawanna County. We can't wait to come back. And uh, the last formal uh, questioning is under disaster preparedness and resilience. So disaster preparedness is obviously a critical aspect for the business community, especially in the face of increasing climate related events like the recent uh, rains and other unexpected emergencies such as COVID-19 pandemic. How do you plan to enhance disaster preparedness for business and residents ensuring that they have the necessary support, education, and resources to mitigate risk and recover quickly after a disaster. Well, I think we just all saw the devastating effects of climate change uh, with the recent uh, storm that affected the Abingtons and uh, the city of Scranton, North Scranton and West Scranton. A lot of my uh, former neighbors over in North Scranton on Leggett Street uh, and other uh, off of West Market Street were devastated uh, by what happened. Um, the Abingtons were devastated by what happened. People literally, as you know, lost their homes uh, and some lost their, even lost their lives. Uh, the county and the city did, I think, a and is doing a tremendous job in responding to those emergencies immediately, on making sure that people have a place to go, uh, to submit information, to get funding, to fix their homes. Um, one of the really terrible things that came out of it was a lot of times insurance doesn't cover uh, doesn't cover it with these uh, new disasters that are happening. And we have to be prepared for that. Um, when I was on council, they called it a one in a hundred year storm. Well, those one in a hundred year storms are happening every two years. So uh, Matt and I are gonna make sure that between our 911 center, our emergency management department, uh, that they have the resources that they need that when disaster strikes, uh, how, how unfortunate it is that we are prepared and we're ready to provide support and resources, not only to the people in our community, but to the uh, businesses as well. You know, um, we, have, we obviously want to keep everybody in mind that was affected um, by that storm that we had. My parents in Westside live on South Merrifield Avenue and obviously North, North Merrifield Avenue um, was affected terribly by, by that storm. It's extremely tragic there. Um, those are people that needed help and, and they still and they still need help. And, you know, when looking at disaster preparedness and, and resilience in today's day and age, it's critical. And I think it's important that our emergency management department, um, our 9-11 and um, our 9-11 um, emergency service departments, we need to make sure that they're well funded. They're well prepared in the event that there is and, and you know, most likely will be you know, more disasters moving forward, we must ensure that our workers are trained properly. The 911 center, I mean, that's that's our first line of defense. That That is a job where no call is a good call. Um, you know, th these are workers that, they, I mean, they, they've given CPR over the phone um, before um, at that position. You know, we have to do everything we can to make sure um, that these workers have the things that they need to perform their jobs to the best of their ability. So we do have a chance. I do have one question from the audience. If anybody else has any questions you want to write on the cards, just signal to uh, Amanda. Uh, we can pick it up. Um, so this one I think is probably appropriate for as we look to near the wrapping up. Um, what are the top priorities that you would have to address in our community? And how do you plan on resolving, fixing the issues that are related to those priorities? Well, I think our number one priority uh, when, if we are elected, is to do is to have a comprehensive analysis of every facet of county government. I mean, there are thirty plus departments in the county. There are dozens and dozens of boards and authorities, and I think it's been many, many years since the county commissioners have actually had people from the public sector and private sector come in and, as I was saying to Matt the other day, open the hood of the the truck, open the hood of the car, and take a look at the engine and making sure that uh, every Every nook and cranny and every department in the county is working as efficiently 
uh, as possible. Um, I think one of the things that we're going to have a, make a big focus on is making sure that we are using technology in the county to work as efficiently as possible. So that would be the, absolutely be number one. Number two is we we want to look at um, affordable housing. Um, I, as I mentioned to you before, from everything that we've been told, we are going to have uh, a train here from Scranton in New York City. And we have a big problem in this county with affordable housing. So we want to collaborate with the business community and others throughout Lackawanna County to see how we can invest in affordable housing and help affordable housing be built so that we're not caught flat-footed uh, when you know, we have more people hopefully moving to Lackawanna County and already compounding the problem. Uh, we also want to take a look at uh, the Montage Mountain in terms of the amphitheater. Uh, the, if anyone's been to the amphitheater lately, uh, there's some issues up there with maintenance and uh, just it being outdated. Um, I haven't been to a concert there in a while, and a lot of my friends don't really like going up there because of the traffic and the bathroom situation and uh, a couple other things. So uh, we want to do our best to make an investment up there and make sure that in terms of tourism and uh, concert venues that we're doing the best that we can, that we have the best concert venue in, in this region. Because uh, it's in a great location, uh, but we need to, I think we need to do more up there and we need to bring it back. So um, I think a lot of our time, uh, if we are elected in the first couple of months, is going to be making sure that we look at every single department, that we look at every single board and authority, and we do a comprehensive review and analysis, but not just from the perspective of Matt and I, but from those people who are experts in, in their field, whether it be uh, human resources or children and youth, uh, things of that nature, to make sure that every single department is running the way that it should. Um, yeah, well said, Bill. And I think, you know, jobs, quality of life, and economic development, and I think everything that Bill, Bill said really falls in that, ki that, that category, right? Being able to prioritize good jobs at good wages, being able to incentivize businesses to put down roots here in Lackawanna County. And like we started off this discussion talking about it. So, you know, our next yeah, our next generation and our younger people can stay here, live here, work here, um, and raise their families here. Always looking to continue to improve the quality of life. The amphitheater, which I which I mentioned earlier, is a discussion Bill, have I, Bill and I have had a number of times here. You wanna be able to attract people to the area. That's a great way to do so. Um, um, and, um, and yeah, so I mean, there's there, there's a number of things that you know we're we're still continuing to discuss and and continuing to talk about, but really think it's an exciting time right now here. The ideas are are, are flying, so this is uh, you know this is a fantastic time I think right now to be living in Lackawanna County. So that last question may have actually compromised the closing statement side of this thing, but we want to give you a chance, uh, each of you, to offer some sort of a closing statement. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much. Uh, this was a great discussion today. I, I can't tell you how excited Matt and I are uh, to run for county commissioner for all the reasons we said in our opening statement. Uh, but more importantly, to let you all know uh, that if we are elected as county commissioners, we are going to work with you. Uh, Bob and I often talk about, even when I was on city council, about the important partnerships between, at that time, the city of Scranton and the chamber and the county and the chamber. Over the last several years, I think all of you have seen that the county commissioners have stepped up in terms of their commitment uh, to small business and to business as a whole here in Lackawanna County. But we want to continue that. We want to continue to invest. We want to make a bigger investment. And we want to work with Bob and Jerry and all of you to make sure that we know what's going on in our business community. That, as I said earlier, we're not just holed up on the... Uh, sixth floor of the, in the, of the Globe store in the county building and we're walled off from the rest of the community. We want to know what's going on. We want a strong workforce development board. We want a strong uh, uh, um, chamber of commerce, a, relationship, a strong relationship with the chamber of commerce and all the other stakeholders here in Lackawanna County. So that's not only going to benefit the business community, it's going to benefit every single person uh, in Lackawanna County. You know, as I mentioned earlier, I have five children under the age of eight. Selfishly, I think of them, and Matt thinks of his children. We think of all the young families in Lackawanna County and uh, children in Lackawanna County. How are we going to keep them here? Well, we're not going to be able to do that with all, without all of you and without all of your help and your partnership. So we're committing to you today that if we're elected, uh, this won't be the last time that you see us. We're going to 
consistently and constantly be asking you for ideas and asking you what you think, uh, because we want Lackawanna County to be number one in terms of innovation, entrepreneurship, technology. We want to be on the cutting edge. Um, and that's our commitment to you today. So I want to thank you again, and uh, we're excited. We hope that we're successful in November, and if we are, we're ready to hit the ground running. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I think one of the most important things that, you know, Bill and I have tried to accomplish since, um, you know, I guess teaming up, you know, post May 16th, which prior to that, I, I thought we did a fantastic job of being able to build a relationship before, um, you know, our primary, which is why we were able to hit the ground running, um, you know, after we were both successful in that is, um, you know, we want you to be able to look at us each and every day and know exactly what you're getting from us. It's commitment, it's dedication, it's teamwork, it's commissioners who will show up to work each and every day with the people of Lackawanna County's best interests in mind. I think what we need in Lackawanna County right now more than ever before is leadership, um, leaders who have a vision, um, leaders who want to work and communicate with all elected officials, with, with business owners all throughout the county, um, you know, leaders who want to be able to restore hope um, in Lackawanna County. You know, as Bill mentioned, you know, um, my wife and I, have, we have a four-year-old and a one-year-old. Th th those two are my inspiration. Those two are my motivation. Um, I also, my parents are also 72 and 70. So you kind of, you kind of look at things, you know, full circle here. Um, but we understand how much potential Lackawanna County has. We want to bring out that potential. We want to do everything we can to put Lackawanna County back on the map statewide. Um, you know, obviously, you know, over the next 40 days or so, we're going to continue to work hard each and every day to put ourselves in the best possible position that we can be come November 7th. We can't do it without your help and support. And, you know, hopefully if, you know, we are successful uh, on November 7th, we believe good things are certainly to come in Lackawanna County. So thanks for being here today. And thanks for the opportunity to, uh, to hear us speak. Okay. On behalf of the Greater Scranton Chamber of Commerce and the Government Affairs and Advocacy Committee, Thank you, Bill Gawhan and Matt McGloin, for joining us this morning. To our members in the audience and those that have participated in our survey, thank you for your participation and feedback related to issues impacting you, our members, and the business community. The next legislative forum is scheduled for October 5th. Doors open at 8 a.m. and the program will begin promptly at 8.30. Republican candidates Chris Shermack and Diana Campbell will join us. If you have not had an opportunity to register, please log on to the events page on the Chamber website. And thank you again for joining us this morning. For more information on the Greater Scranton Chamber of Commerce, our affiliates, programs, and upcoming events, please visit our website at www.scrantonchamber.com. This concludes today's program, and thanks again for attending. And, if, and, and, and real quick, if anybody had a question we didn't have time to get to, there we go. We can take them as long as your emails are on them. We'll, we'll absolutely reach out and, and get back to you. So thank you.